Right into the deep end. It's not very often you get to hear stories from an astronaut who experienced space missions firsthand. Now you have a chance to hear from astronaut Tom Jones at the Museum of Flight this weekend. Steve is in the Ark Lounge this morning with Tom and Senior Public Relations Manager for the museum, Ted Hutter. Steve, good morning to you all. Good morning to you, and what a joy this is to have both of you come in this morning, and especially you, Tom, with the history that you've had with all the missions that you've been on. You know, We've talked about how you're a scientist, you're an author, you're a pilot, you've been on these missions. I want to kind of go all the way back to what inspired you to get into this profession in the first place? What was it when you were younger? I was growing up during the space race in the 1960s and okay. the race to put the first human on the moon between the Soviets and the U.S. And so uh, as a Cub Scout in my hometown of Baltimore, I went down to the rocket factory on a field trip with my Cub Pack. And there, there were these two Martin Marietta Titan II missiles being built to carry the Gemini astronauts into space right before Apollo. Yeah. And I walked in as a 10-year-old and saw these <laughs> missiles being built, and I thought, that's got to be the coolest job <laughs> ever. So that was really it for me. And then it just sort of set off on this remarkable career. Yeah, you see Neil and Buzz going to the moon, yeah. and uh, I found out about how to, they were test pilots, and I wanted to be a test pilot so I could join the astronaut corps. So it took me... It only took me from that 10-year-old, it took me 29 years to get to space. You know, so, not too bad, though, but you made it. I had a lot of fun along the thing. way. Along the For way. people who aren't familiar with your history, describe some of the missions that you were part of. So I flew on the space shuttle, okay. and it flew for 30 years, and I flew in the middle 10 years of its 30-year career in the 1990s, early 2000s. Three science missions. Uh, I'm a mission specialist on the shuttle, so I was doing a jack-of-all-trades kind of job, robot arms, spacewalks, science payloads and doing all the research activity up there. And on, on my last trip to the space station, I actually helped build that. And so it was a hard hat construction mission. When, and, and we're showing some of the pictures too um, from some of your missions, I think there. When you had that opportunity to make it into space for the very first time, and I remember thinking back, seeing those you know big rockets as a kid, what was it like that first time to be like, I'm actually doing this. <laughs> well, when I had my first blast off on STS-59 on the shuttle Endeavour, yeah. and eight and a half minutes to get to space, you're rattled and vibrated and thrown around and pushed back into your seat with three Gs of acceleration, and, I, and the engine shut off, quiet, and we float out of our seat against the straps, and the first thing I did is I took my glove off my spacesuit and I tugged it off, and I let it go, and it just <laughs> rotated in front of me, and I got this huge grin on my face because I was really there. Yeah. And then it was about an hour later when I got to look out the window and saw the Earth from space for the first time. Which brought tears to my eyes. I, I know pictures have been taken of that view when you see that, but they don't do it justice. Is all no, it was a sunrise, and so oh, wow. black Earth down below, black space, and then this beautiful robin's egg blue spreading along the horizon before the sun burst into view. Just a fantastic. It was worth the 29-year wait. Oh, I bet. That would just pay that off. And I know that you talked with uh, more than 100 fellow astronauts uh, about their personal missions as well. And, and what was that like for you? You know, you have your own personal story, but then also hearing from some of your colleagues who have been part of this remarkable industry. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Well, I worked with you know, over 100 astronauts in the office in Houston. But I didn't talk to the ones who'd come before me in the 1980s. And of course, I left NASA in 2001 to write my story yeah. and do research. But this was a chance for me to get on Zoom during the COVID and talk to all my friends and hear their inside stories of their missions in a way that we were too busy to do while we were all working together in Houston. So it was a great privilege to get to hear all their impressions of their different space flights. What was the biggest takeaway for you during those conversations? Uh, I think that uh, collectively, all these folks, uh, 130 plus that I interviewed, they contributed their stories which have all these valuable lessons about how we learn to do things well in space on the mm, shuttle. Okay. We're applying that on the space station. And if we can remember those lessons, we'll be a lot safer and more successful as we return to the moon. That's a good, good learning thing. Ted, I want to bring you in too. And there's obviously this uh, very important lecture that's happening tomorrow at the Museum of, of, of Flight. How did this collaboration come together? Well, it started uh, about a year ago, and we put together an exhibit that's open now called Home Beyond Earth. Okay. And it's all about space stations and living in space. So for the rest of the year, for the run of this show, we're going to have more programs like Tom's that give firsthand experience and other perspectives of, of living in space. And if somebody wants to go to the lecture, what do they need to know? Tickets? How do you get in? How do you come and listen to Tom and, and learn all about this experience? Go to the museum. The, the program's at 2 p.m. 
and there'll be a book signing afterwards. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can buy tickets online, www.museumofflight.org. Easy. That's really easy to get in. Tell me a little bit about your book here and, and what you hope people take away from it. So I wanted to get at least some of these human stories together before all of these astronauts, these veterans, just leave our stage. Yeah. And since I interviewed those 130 plus folks, we've lost five already mm. since I started those interviews in 2020. Yeah. So what people will get out of this book is a, a human impression of each one of the 135 shuttle missions, including the two lost shuttle crews. And they'll get a little bit of my story, but mostly about my colleagues. And we'll see how the shuttle evolved over 30 years. And along with the 600 color photos in the book, they'll get mm. a great impression of what it was like to live and work in space and make the shuttle NASA's uh, and the US's iconic spaceship. What a miraculous thing to look through and read to and hear about your experiences and, and all the other experiences that, that your colleagues have experienced over the past couple years. Thanks. Honored to meet you both. Thank you so much for coming in and, and hope the lecture goes well. And have a good rest of your trip to Seattle. We'll have a lot of fun. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Pretty cool, right? How about that? Steve, I got chills when, I when Tom was describing seeing the Earth from space yes. for the first time. Yeah, especially that sunrise or sunset. What a what an amazing thing to experience. So mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, thank you all. For more information.